Climate change is no longer a distant threat. It's a reality that's already reshaping our world in profound ways. One of the most pressing concerns is its impact on respiratory health. As temperatures rise, weather patterns shift and air quality deteriorates. The risks to our lungs are becoming increasingly evident. From worsening asthma to the spread of new allergens, climate change is a massive threat to respiratory health. And it's a problem that's only going to grow unless we take decisive action. Keep watching to learn how climate change affects our respiratory systems, who's most at risk, and what we can do to protect ourselves and future generations. At its core, climate change is about more than just warmer temperatures. It's a complex web of interconnected changes that affect everything from the air we breathe to the water we drink. For respiratory health, the consequences are particularly dire. Climate change can directly aggravate existing respiratory conditions like asthma and COPD or indirectly increase our exposure to risk factors such as air pollution and allergens. For example, rising temperatures and higher levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are causing plants to produce more pollen and for longer periods. This means longer allergy seasons and more severe symptoms for those who suffer from pollen-related conditions like hay fever or allergic asthma. But it's not just pollen. Climate change is also linked to increased mold growth, higher concentration of ground-level ozone, and more frequent wildfires, all of which can wreak havoc on our lungs. Wildfires in particular have become a major concern in recent years. They release massive amounts of particulate matter into the air, which can travel hundreds of miles and affect people far from the fire's origin. These tiny particles can penetrate deep into the lungs, causing inflammation and exacerbating conditions like asthma and COPD. For people with pre-existing respiratory conditions, these changes can be life-threatening. While climate change affects everyone, some groups are more vulnerable than others. People with pre-existing respiratory or cardiovascular conditions such as asthma, COPD, or heart disease are at higher risk of experiencing severe health effects. Children and the elderly are also particularly susceptible. Children's lungs are still developing, making them more vulnerable to damage from air pollution and allergens. Older adults, on the other hand, may have weakened immune systems or pre-existing health conditions that make it harder for their bodies to cope with the added stress of climate change. Disadvantaged communities are also disproportionately affected. These groups often have limited access to health care, live in areas with poorer air quality, and may lack the resources to adapt to changing environmental conditions. For example, low-income neighborhoods are more likely to be located near industrial areas or highways where air pollution levels are higher. They may also have less access to air conditioning, making it harder to cope with heat waves, which can exacerbate respiratory conditions. Climate change in many ways amplifies existing inequalities, leaving the most vulnerable populations at even greater risk. Air pollution is one of the most significant ways climate change impacts respiratory health. As temperatures rise, so do the levels of ground-level ozone, a harmful pollutant that forms when sunlight reacts with emissions from cars, factories, and other sources. Ozone is a powerful irritant that can cause shortness of breath, coughing, and wheezing and it can trigger asthma attacks. It's particularly dangerous for people who spend a lot of time outdoors like children, athletes, and outdoor workers. Particulate matter, another major component of air pollution, is also a serious concern. These tiny particles, with a diameter of less than 2.5 micrometers, can penetrate deep into the lungs and even enter the bloodstream. Long-term exposure to particulate matter has been linked to a range of health problems, including respiratory infections, lung cancer, and cardiovascular disease. Climate change is expected to increase the levels of particulate matter in the air thanks to factors like wildfires, dust storms, and the increased use of fossil fuels for energy production. If you've noticed that your allergies seem to be getting worse every year, you're not alone. Climate change is driving an increase in both the quantity and potency of allergens like pollen and mold. Warmer temperatures and higher carbon dioxide levels are causing plants to produce more pollen and for longer periods. In some regions, the pollen season has already extended by several weeks compared to just a few decades ago. This means more days of sneezing, itchy eyes, and runny noses for allergy sufferers. But it's not just the amount of pollen that's increasing, it's also becoming more potent. 
Studies have shown that plants grown in higher carbon dioxide environments produce pollen with higher levels of allergenic proteins. This means that even if you've never had allergies before, you might start developing symptoms as the climate continues to change. And for those who already suffer from allergies, the symptoms are likely to become more severe. Mold is another allergen that's thriving in our changing climate. Warmer, wetter conditions are creating the perfect environment for mold to grow both indoors and outdoors. Flooding, which is becoming more frequent and severe due to climate change, can also lead to mold growth in homes and buildings. For people with mold allergies or asthma, this can trigger severe symptoms and even lead to hospitalizations. Extreme weather events such as heat waves, hurricanes, and floods are becoming more frequent and intense due to climate change, and they pose significant risks to respiratory health. Heat waves, for example, can exacerbate respiratory conditions by increasing the levels of ground-level ozone and particulate matter in the air. They can also lead to dehydration, which can make it harder for the body to clear mucus from the airways, increasing the risk of infections. Flooding, on the other hand, can lead to mold growth and water contamination, both of which can affect respiratory health. After a flood, standing water and damp materials create the perfect environment for mold to grow. Inhaling mold spores can cause respiratory symptoms, especially in people with asthma or allergies. Flooding can also lead to water contamination, which can increase the risk of waterborne diseases that affect the respiratory system. The good news is, is that there are steps we can take to reduce the impact of climate change on respiratory health. Some of these measures require large-scale policy changes, while others are things we can do as individuals. One of the most effective ways to protect respiratory health is to reduce air pollution. This means transitioning to cleaner sources of energy, such as wind and solar power, and reducing our reliance on fossil fuels. It also means improving public transportation and encouraging people to drive less. Cities can play a key role by implementing policies that reduce tariff congestion and promote walking, cycling, and the use of public transit. Urban planning can also make a big difference. Planting non-allergenic trees in cities can help reduce the levels of pollen in the air. Since we spend most of our time indoors, improving indoor air quality is crucial. This can be done by using air purifiers, reducing the use of products that release volatile organic compounds, and ensuring proper ventilation. It's also important to address mold growth promptly and keep indoor humidity levels in check. Education is key. People need to understand how climate change affects their health and what they can do to protect themselves. Finally, we need strong policies to address the root causes of climate change. This includes reducing greenhouse gas emissions, investing in renewable energy, and protecting vulnerable populations. Advocacy is essential to ensure that policymakers prioritize these issues. Healthcare professionals have a vital role to play in addressing the impact of climate change on respiratory health. Just as they have been instrumental in raising awareness about the dangers of smoking, they can also help educate the public about the health risks of climate change. By advocating for clean air policies and supporting efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, healthcare professionals can help protect their patients and communities. Climate change is a global crisis, but its impact on respiratory health is deeply personal. It affects the air we breathe, the allergens we encounter, and the weather we experience. While the challenges are significant, there's still hope. By taking action at both the individual and policy levels, we can reduce the impact of climate change on respiratory health and create a healthier future for everyone. The time to act is now because our lungs depend on it. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you will enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Have a nice day and thanks for watching.